Today I thought we'd look at the last type of timer. So we've looked at panel timers and we've looked at engine timers. Today we're going to look at the synth timer. So I'm just going to add an interface script to this empty project. And let's also add a sine wave generator. So the timer callback is built in. So we've got our uh, various callbacks in this drop down menu. And you'll notice this one here is called on timer. And the most important difference between this timer and the other timers we've looked at is this one will work in real time. So if you're doing stuff that needs to be synced to um, a host or it needs to work in real time for when someone's uh, playing the instrument, then this is the timer you're going to use. Because it's real time, you probably won't want to take advantage of that uh, part of it for your interface script, because usually your interface script is going to be deferred. And when you defer a script, it means all of the callbacks, including the on timer, will no longer be real time. So this is the kind of thing you're generally going to use in a separate script. So you, you add a second script and this is where you do your real time timer stuff. But because I don't want to get into um, the complexity of how you link up uh, different scripts, we're just going to do it all inside the interface script and I'm not going to defer the callbacks in it. So we're going to do something fairly simple. We're going to create a kind of sequencer, but it's not going to be a very complicated sequencer. Uh, we're going to have it play a set of notes and we're going to be able to control the volume that they're played at. And in fact, we'll, we'll control the velocity. So um, in order to link the velocity to the volume, we'll click on gain here and we'll add a voice start velocity modulator. So now when we change the velocity, it will change the volume. So for our little sequencer, we're going to need a, an interface. Um, so we'll add a slider pack and we'll have 16 sliders, which is what we have. And the, these sliders are going to represent velocity. So we're going to set the range from one to 127. And the step size can be one. And we'll make this a little larger. So this is going to represent 16 steps in our sequence. And we can see over in the top right, the value of each slider when we move it. So let's get into this. So we're going to need a reference to our slider pack. So let's rename our slider pack. And we'll create a reference to it there. And we're going to have this sequence play back when you press a key, I think. Yeah, let's do it that way. So when you press a key, it will start the timer, which will play back the sequence. Uh, it's not going to, the, the key you press won't affect which notes are played back in the sequence. We're just going to put a fixed set in here, but you could change that and you could make it so it plays specific notes that you're holding down or a particular sequence that you want to trigger. So the notes we're going to play, we'll put those in a variable. Uh, we'll put them in an array actually, I'll call it notes. And we'll play, let's do a little sort of arpeggio. So we'll play something, something like that. Uh, so that's going to be note 60, middle C, 64, the E, 67, the G, and then we'll play the C at the top. So that's 72. So that's the sequence we're going to play back. So as long as we have a note held, it's going to play these notes in order and then it'll loop back to the beginning and play through them again. Uh, so we're going to go into the on note callback. So in our on note callback, we're going to ignore the note that was pressed. We're not going to trigger a sound when a key is pressed. So all right, message dot ignore event true. So now if I play on the keyboard, let's bring the keyboard up here. We won't hear anything. And instead, what we want to do is start our timer running. 
And the way you start a timer uh, is pretty much the same as we did with the engine timer and the panel timer, except this time instead of writing timer.starttimer, we write synth.starttimer. And the other difference is with the previous timers, we were giving a value in milliseconds, but with the synth timer, we're going to give a value in seconds. So we'll put something like 0.5. Okay, so that's the first thing. And then we want in our note off callback, we want to stop the timer. So we'll put synth dot stop timer. Now this is going to stop the timer when we release any key. So if we're holding down five keys and we release one of them, that will stop the timer. We only want it to stop when we release all the keys. So we can put a little if statement before this to check that all of the keys have been released. So we'll put if synth dot get num pressed keys. So that tells us how many keys are pressed. And we can put equals equals zero. Or we can write this a bit shorter and just put an exclamation mark at the beginning. So if no keys are pressed, then stop the timer. Okay, now we need to actually write our timer callback. So we'll go to on timer, and we're going to need to have a counter that counts through the elements of our array. So it's going to be an index. So that's got to be outside of the timer because if we put if we declare it inside the timer, for example, if I put local index equals zero, and then we increment it, let's say we do index equals index plus one. The problem with this is going to be that the timer is kind of like a loop. So the timer gets re-triggered every time the interval that we've passed, in this case, 500 milliseconds, every, every 500 milliseconds, this timer is going to re-trigger and if we're declaring our variable inside the timer, it's going to reset every time the timer triggers. So it will, it will never increase. So we have to declare our index outside of the timer callback. And we'll declare it as a reg variable. And we'll just put it here, index equals zero. And now inside our timer, so we can increase our index by one. Index equals index plus one. The reason I'm not using the shorthand index plus plus is because we're using this index to go through our array. And once we get to the end, we want it to loop back to the beginning. So we're going to use the modulo operator and you can't use that with the index plus plus. So we're going to add that on now. So we're going to put the percent sign modulo and we need the number of elements in our array, one, two, three, four. So we could just write four there or we can actually just grab it from the array itself with notes.length. And if you hover the mouse over here, you can see it actually tells us that the length is four. So that's helpful. Okay, so now we're increasing the index every time we come into the timer. And again, think of the timer like a loop. We're just hitting this loop every uh, 0.5 seconds, or we're hitting this function every 0.5 seconds. So let's just print that out, console.print index. And it won't do anything yet, but if I hold down a key, you can see in the console it's printing out 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3. And now if I hold down multiple keys, it's going again. If I lift off one of the keys, it's not going to stop. If I lift off another key, it's not going to stop. But if I lift off the last key, it stops. And that's because in our on note off callback, we have this little check to make sure that all of the keys are lifted. So that's working great so far. So the next thing is to get it to play a note. And we do that with synth dot play note. And we have to give it a note number and we're going to get it from our notes array. And we're going to use our index variable as the index. And then we have to give it a velocity, which we're going to get from our slider pack here, but we'll come to that in a moment. For now, we'll just stick in a velocity of 64. And the other thing I need to do, let's get rid of this console print now. We need to move this command to before we increment the index. Because if we don't do that, then it's going to start on, uh, it'll play the uh, note number one first instead of starting at zero. Oh, and that reminds me, when we stop the timer, we should reset the index as well. 
So we'll set index back to zero. Okay, so now if I hold down an, uh, a note, a key, it should uh, play each of the notes in our array in order. Now you'll notice that the sound built up there, just stacked up on top of each other. So what we want to get it to do now is to turn off the previous notes. So the way we do that is we're going to store the event ID of each of the notes, and then we're going to turn it off before we play the next note. And we're, we're going to make this kind of monophonic, so we're only going to have one ID that's shared between them. So we'll have an ID variable. And back in our timer callback, we can get the note ID from this uh, synth play note command. If we have a look at that in the API browser, if we right click on it, it says it returns an int value. And what it does, uh, that int value is the event ID. So we can store that in our ID variable. And before we play the next note, so before this line where we're playing the note, we need to make sure that any previous notes have been turned off. And to do that, we write synth dot note off by event ID, and we put our ID in there. Now we're going to get a little error pop up. So I'll hit F5, and I'm going to press a key, and we'll get an error. Okay, can you see that? It's saying on timer line three, column 27, call with undefined parameter. So this is our function call, and the parameter is ID. And it's saying ID is undefined, and it is at this point, because the first time we come into this timer, ID doesn't have a value. So let's give it a value. Let's give it the value of minus 99. We're still going to get an error. So we've given it a value, minus 99. I'll hit F5. And now I'll press a key. Okay, and can you see now we're getting this error? Hell breaks loose if you kill real events artificially. I'm not sure why we're getting that particular error, but the issue here is we're now trying to kill an event with an ID of minus 99. And that event doesn't exist because... There is, we haven't actually got a note with an ID of minus 99. That's just the value we've assigned. So we need to actually check that we have an ID in there. So we're going to say if ID does not equal minus 99, then it must have been set here to, a, uh, to an actual ID that uh, we can use. And hopefully this time when I press the key, it will play each note and stop the previous one. Now the last note's going to hang because when I take my finger off the key, uh, obviously the, the time is no longer running. So we need to turn off the last note inside the on note off. So we'll just do exactly the same thing. We'll do a little safety check just to make sure that there is actually a note. And then we'll just turn that note off. And after this, what we can do is we can reset the ID to minus 99. So again, I'll press a key, we'll hear the sequence, and this time when I take my finger off the key, hopefully the last note will stop. And if I press it again, it should go without any issues. Perfect. So the last little part of this we've got to do is we're going to grab the values from this table as our velocity. So we've got 16 values here, but our current, uh, where are we? Our index is only going up to four. So we need another counter to count through the steps in our table. So we'll have another counter. Let's call it reg counter. And it's going to start at zero as well. And again, we'll reset this counter inside our note off callback. And let's put that one down there as well. And just to keep everything tidy, we'll put the index reset down here as well. And then back in our timer, we're going to do the same thing that we did for the index where we're incrementing it uh, by one. We're going to do the same thing for our counter variable. So we'll have counter equals counter plus one. And these parentheses are important, by the way, otherwise it doesn't work properly with the modulo operator. 
and then modulo, and then we want the number of uh, steps in our table. So it'll be SLP velocity dot, and I think the function is get num steps, but I'll just check. Or maybe it's sliders. Get num sliders, that's it. So this counter is now going to count up to uh, 16. We might need to minus one off here. Let's test it and see what we get. So we'll just do console.print counter. And so we don't have to hear that annoying sequence playing back. I will just comment this out. So this should count up to 15 and then reset. Yeah, okay, so that's, that's working fine. Okay, so now we need to get the velocity value, which means we're going to get the slider value. And the slider that we're going to is based on whatever the value of counter is. So we'll have a variable called v for velocity. And this is going to be equal to slider pack velocity dot. I always forget what the function is. It's get slider value at, I think. But let's check. Get, yeah, get slider value at. And we want to get it at the counter. So the counter is our index. So you can think of this as an array. And we're using counter uh, to specify which element in the array we want, which slider we want. And then we replace 64 here with V. And now this will control our velocity. So if I put that right at the top, we're going to get a really loud note there. So I'll pull it down a bit. And we'll just have some um, varying data throughout this table. And let's see what we get. Okay, so that works uh, nicely. Now, one other thing you can do is if you want to link uh, the time here to, uh, say, a uh, tempo, rather than putting a time value directly in here, let's have... Um, call this delay, we'll have a variable. We can use this function engine dot, I think it's get milliseconds for tempo. Um, no, that's another one I want, for beat. Yeah, so, and if we put one uh, quarter note in there and we say 120 BPM, so that's going to give us milliseconds, which we can then pass into the timer. But if you remember, this timer takes um, seconds, so we have to divide it by a thousand. And now I can change it to something like 200 BPM. You get the idea. And this doesn't have to be a fixed tempo like this. You could have a knob on the interface to change the tempo. You could be getting it from the door. Um, the, the way you get this delay time is up to you, but this is just one way of doing it for um, a specific BPM. All right, and that's all there is to it. So using the synth timer is uh, really great for doing sequences and arpeggiators and things like that. If, if you need anything that's going to be real time, as I say, you should really do this in a separate script to the main interface script and just have your main interface script for the the GUI stuff, the way the user interacts with it. So you'd have your sl slider pack on the main interface script, for example, but the timer backend functionality will go in a separate script. But that's kind of getting a bit too complicated, so we'll save that for another video. I uh, hope you found this useful. If you do have any questions or comments, let me know. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.